So now we can see that this is actually doing something. So why don't we make it hook up to our um, our radii here, our circles. So we need to find in our slider the event to hook that into. Events right over there. You can listen to interaction, update, change, set, and slide. Let's. I want it to do it actually as they're sliding. So that's cool. You can see this one. Wow, this is a really nice API. It tells you just when different ones are happening. So I'm going to use the slide. It looks like update is also would be a good one. But slide looks like it will set uh, very nicely. So let's use slide. So what we can do is once we make our slider here, we just have to say on... slide and then we'll put a function and let's see what it gives us okay let's see what happens there looks like we got the two values out which is that's pretty cool so we get them in the max and there's the two values that are currently it sits at that makes sense that one of them should be one less since we actually did that so we're going to have to change that to, uh, we're going to have to filter, and we're going to have to change these into numbers to do so. So when this actually happens, what we're going to do is we're going to loop over the Earthquakes GeoJSON, just like we do in the other section. We're going to go each layer, function, layer. Okay, and then we're going to say, if the layer dot, we had a layer dot feature dot properties, dot mag, right? So if the mag is going to be uh, greater than or equal to the parse float of, what does it have here? We have, when we have E, we just have an array, so it'll be E0. And, so that's like if it's greater than the, the minimum, and if it's less than the maximum, right there, by referring to these different pieces of the array. Um, if it's greater than the minimum and less than the maximum, then we should show it. So let's go back and just get this layer.add to map, and we'll just have the same else thing going on. Okay, so that's pretty cool. Let's see if we can make that actually work. So maybe now we'll make it load showing everything so we can see the change. Okay, look at that. Removes them one by one. Isn't that pretty cool? And you can, it also works in the other direction here. So now we have this slider that's working in a pretty cool way. And if we search the filter, uh, you can see it actually kind of breaks it. So they, they are independent right now. They're independent filters. So instead of having them be in, independent like that, why don't we hook it up so that they have to take each other into account so that if someone's typing and they've set a range, they will work together. Because right now, if I type this, it kills the range. You can see that sudden change as soon as I do one or the other. Right there. Um, so what we have to do now is actually, just like we saved some of these JSONs up there, we're going to have a thing that says filters. Okay. And what we're going to have is just an array of filters. We're going to be able to check maybe, maybe we're going to check uh, text. We're going to, sorry, an object of filters is going to check what's the current text, and we're going to check what's the current range, and that's going to be an array. So for start, the range is always going to be min-max, so we can say as soon as we have this min-max and we make our circle, or make our slider, we're going to say filters.range equals min-max, so they fit each other, and then we actually make the start just that. Uh, that's a little simpler. Okay, so we do that, filters.range, and at the beginning, our user input doesn't need to change. But here, now, when we do change it, we're going to set filters.text equal to the user value. And also, when they changed the slider, we're going to change it so this gets set to um, something that is in the same format because remember it came across as a string, so we want to make sure that instead of a string, we're saving everything as numbers. That way we don't have to mess around too much with formatting. Okay, so uh, we just do this, that's pretty nice. 
now we can access them in each other. So what we then need to do is start having a different kind of function that maybe will be our filter function. So we say, okay, filter, um, filter GeoJSON. And we'll have it here. It takes the filter and, um, you know, we can have it take the current GeoJSON too. Although none of this, it's, most of these are going to be available. Uh, actually, we can just say, just filter GeoJSON because all this is going to be available right out there. It's just going to take the layer. Okay, so all we're going to do is pass it the layer. We're have filter GeoJSON here, layer, and we're going to check all of these properties. So we're going to check if um, okay um, is it oh, is it found? It's going to be false to start. So at the start, we're going to assume that we aren't going to return this particular layer, that we're not going to show it. So first we're going to check, okay, is the um, our little thing here with the filters is filters.text the right, is it in the, the layer's title? Okay, so that's our thing. So if it is, it's is it found equals true. Okay, that's good. And then we're going to add this other one. So if the filters uh, zero, here we go, filters dot range zero is, we're just substituting in the same values, but using the range variable that we just made. So that way we can store them all together. Okay, and then if this is, is it found equal true? Okay, so that's pretty cool. And then, of course, if neither of those is found, then we're going to have it be, um, we're going to have it make everything disappear. So we're going to say then, if is it found, and then we're just going to do our layer add to, our layer remove from. Okay, so now in here, instead of all this, we're going to put filter geojson.layer, just like we do here. All right. So, and we're going to set this beforehand so that we don't accidentally filter anything in the wrong order or anything like that. Let's see if that will work together. We may have a bug or two. So we first get this, and it's not actually filtering anything. So we have a problem. Filter GeoJSON.layer is maybe not working as we wanted. So we have a problem here where we set this to be empty. So what's happening is this is always turning out to be true. So what we need to do is make sure that filters.text is uh, does not equal blank and also matches. Let's see what happens then. See if our filter runs. It's a little more smooth. There we go. So it looks like it's running. I'm going to get rid of some of these console logs just because they are slowing it down a little bit. All right, there we go. Nice and fast. Okay, now it should work with this. As you can see, it brought back a whole bunch of them, which actually makes sense, because what we want it to do is be showing both of those filters together. Okay, they're not doing an exclusive search in this case. We're making it show match either of them. Now, if we wanted it to do um, a search that is exclusive, for instance, that the E should only be the ones within this other toggle, then we have to add, um, we have to make sure that they're all true. So I would check number to be true, and I'd make this zero, or number of true. And then every time that one is true, I would add one to that number. Number of true is, okay, there we go. And then all I have to do is check to see if the number of true equals two, because that's what I need it to be. And you can obviously make this all dynamic. So if I do that now, you can see that none of it is matching because actually it needs them both to be correct. So that means we need to maybe change this a little and have it be okay if that's actually empty. Okay, So maybe we do that and you can see there we go. And now it's only showing them working together. Where if I do a E now, it doesn't actually add new ones to the map. Let's see. It only removes them. Right, so we have our filters actually working together now as uh, filters that this is matched with this one. 
so we're, that's pretty cool. We have interactive filters working with something on the map. So next up, what we're going to be doing is adding a little bit more in terms of select information, also data, so that when we're hovering, we can show a little bit of data of what's going on inside these polygons. And uh, you can see our map is getting fairly complicated, but it's also getting fun. So we'll see you in the next episode.